Hello friends, in this video, let us see the comparison between simplex lap and simplex wave winding. So, this is the basic coil for the winding connection for the simplex lap and this is the simplex wave. For the simplex lap, this is the starting side of one coil and this is the finishing side of that coil. This is the starting side of the second coil and the finishing side of the second coil. So, the dotted portion is represented for the bottom portion of the conductor and the solid portion is represented for the top portion of the conductor. It is also likewise here. So, these are the commutated segments and this is the commutated segments. So, here you can see the finishing side of a coil is connected to the starting side of a next coil and this starting side of a coil is connected backward to the first coil. So, it is connected backward, it is the starting side is connected backward and the finishing side is connected forward. So, there is a alternate back and forward direction in this lap winding as the winding progresses forward. So, as you can see there is an overlap present here that is why this type of winding connection is referred as lap winding and for the wave winding you can see here again here also the finishing side or the finishing end of a first coil is connected to the starting side of a next coil but you can see the, the winding connection is done in the forward direction. So, the winding connection done in the forward direction and likewise every coil successively passes alternating alternating north and south pole in only forward direction. That is, there is only one direction of the winding progressive that is the progression of the winding is in only one direction but here it is in the alternate back and forward direction though it is presenting the forward under your north pole and the south pole. So, this is your wave winding. Wave winding. In the wave winding uh, video, we have talked about the advantages of the wave winding and we have also talked about the lab winding features. So, in this video, we shall see the overall basic or oh, some valid differences between the simplex lab winding and the simplex wave winding. So, in the simplex lab winding, the coils generating or the coils generating EMF in same direction, EMF in same direction are connected in parallel. So, the coils generating EMF in same direction are connected in parallel and therefore, this winding can also be called as the parallel winding. Parallel winding and here the coils carrying current in the same direction are connected in series and it is also called as the series winding. Series winding, this is parallel or you can say sometimes multiple winding as well. So, this is a series winding where the current it is having basically two parallel paths. One path will be carrying current in one direction and the other parallel path will be carrying in other direction. But each parallel path, the conductors will be carrying current in the same direction and they are connected in series. So, this is series and this is the parallel connection. Now, the second difference is what I am saying is the number of parallel paths. So, the number of parallel paths will be equal to number of poles number of parallel paths denoted by A. So, your A will be equal to pole that is lap L A P. A for the parallel paths, P for the poles. So, the number of parallel paths will be equal to number of poles and here the number of parallel paths will be always 2 in a simplex wave winding. And the third other difference is the number of brushes, number of brushes will be equal to number of poles in a simplex lap winding and here the number of brushes will be 2 and for the larger machines for the satisfactory performance of the computation the number of brushes must be equal to the number of poles and the advantage here it is though one or more brushes is making poor contact though one or more brushes is making poor contact with the computer segments still you can have the good computation but if there is a poor contact here then there won't be the satisfactory performance of the computation here. So, that is the main difference you can notice in the uh, brushes why we are using 2 here and number of brushes equal number of poles here and the fourth difference is let, let us talk about the dummy coils and the equalizer range. So, in the simplex lab winding there is uh, dummy coil not required. The dummy coils 
dummy coils are the inactive coils which are used to basically give mecha uh, mechanical balance to the machine so basically they are used to give mechanical balance and here your dummy coils may be required may be required and next i'll talk about the equalizer rings so uh, the equalizer rings may be required here equalizer rings are the low resistive copper rings they are basically connected to the points to make the potential difference equal so that you can avoid the circulating currents so the equalizer rings may be required and here not required and uh, the other difference i'll talk about we talk about is over the current so the conductor current ic will be equal to armature current ia upon the number of parallel paths is a and here the conductor current ic will be equal to ia upon 2 because the number of parallel paths it will be equal to 2 always in the simplex wave winding and the seventh difference is about the induced emf so we all know that the induced emf or the generated emf is given by a is equal to p phi nz upon 68 now in the lab winding the simplex lab winding the number of parallel paths number of parallel paths a will be equal to t so a and t gets cancelled and here the induced emf is independent of the number of poles so emf is independent of poles but here in the seventh difference the emf in the wave winding as the number of parallel paths will be equal to 2 so e e will be phi p phi nz upon 120 that is 60 into 2 where 2 is the number of parallel paths so here it is dependent on the number of poles so here your induced emf is dependent on the number of poles and the other difference is here i shall talk about the cost so the cost of your equalizer rings to make the potential difference equal and uh, in order to have the higher current you need more number of conductors to be connected in parallel in the lab winding so you can say the winding cost the winding cost and equalizer rings cost will be higher so there will be higher cost and uh, there will become you can say lower cost as we do not require a large number of conductors and equalizer rings other than the dummy conductors and the dummy dummy coils will be normally two one or two or three so you know there will the cost will be lower and the nine difference is so basically the lab winding we are having the number of parallel paths and the number of parallel paths can carry more number of current and uh, the emf for all the parallel paths will be equal so it will be used in the applications of low voltage and uh, high current dc machines and uh, it is as it is having only two parallel paths it can and the winding is called as a series winding where the emfs get added up so you can say it is useful for high voltage and low current machines now if i talk about the back pitch front pitch and the commutator pitch so this is your commutator pitch yc and uh, this is your back pitch yb and uh, this is this is your yf and uh, the starting of the two coils is given by the resultant pitch yr so likewise you can see i have already discussed all this yc yf yb yr so yc is the distance in terms of commutator segments between the two ends of a same coil and yb is nothing but the coil spread or the coil span it is a distance in terms of armature conductors between the starting side of coil to the finishing side of the same coil and your yf is the finishing side of one coil to the starting side of another coil and the yr is the starting side of one coil to the starting side of another coil so in the simplex lab winding the relation between the yb and yf so here your yb will be equal to yf plus or minus 2m and m is equal to 1 for your simplex winding and your commutator pitch here it will be equal to plus or minus m and m will be equal to 1 for the simplex lab winding so it will be simply plus or minus 1 and this will be yf plus or minus 2 so this is the yb yf and yc and here your y average 
must be approximately equal to the pole pitch that is z upon p and it will be equal to the summation average of yb plus yf upon 2 and here you can see again the back pitch and the front pitch must be odd and same here the back pitch and the front pitch must be odd and here your back pitch must be nearly equal to the uh, pole pitch that is the number of conductors upon poles and here your back pitch and the front pitch in a simplex wave winding they must be nearly equal to the yb and yf must be nearly equal to the pole pitch and they may be equal your yb and yf can be equal and they may be differed by 2 also now when they differ by 2 your back pitch yb will be given by y average plus 1 and your front pitch will be given by y average minus 1 when they differ by 2 so your y average again here will be given by yb plus yf by 2 and this will be equal to z plus or minus 2m upon p where m is equal to 1 for the simplex we are winding. So this is y average and here your commutator pitch yc will be equal to y average. So this is all about the commutator pitch, back pitch, front pitch and uh, the average pitch. So this is, these are the basic differences what I can say about the simplex lab winding and the simplex wave winding in this video. I hope you understood well. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.